uh, going to talk about art at the age of AI. Um, you already have uh, heard a lot of uh, in, uh, very uh, exciting talks today about um, art making using some technology and some AI. I, I'll give my uh, view on that. Um, so these are some amazing artworks from uh, some of the pioneering uh, artists who have been using AI in the last uh, couple of years. There are many, many other artists now using AI, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that this is booming and, and uh, becoming um, an avant-garde movement. And, um, anyway, so how to make art using AI? Uh, first, I have to say that making art using AI is not something new. Since the, the, the beginning of AI, 50 years ago, artists has been trying to make art using AI. What's new now, there is a new wave of um, uh, uh, making art using AI, or exploring uh, making art using AI using some tools called um, GANs that you heard uh, again and again uh, today. Some of you might, might be familiar with it. So how this work in general, uh, basically uh, you give this machine a bunch of images, let's say images of cats, and it try to make new cats. Um, uh, so the question is, uh, what is, uh, so you will see in a second how, how that happened, but the question is what happened if you give it art images, like take images of actual art and give it uh, the machine these kind of uh, images. Obviously it will emulate art. Um, it will just try to emulate what happened in art history or um, um, uh, uh, by emulating art. So how this uh, machine work, basically, um, this machine, uh, or the GANs, uh, work by uh, a game between two, uh, um, um, two players. One is called the generator, and one is called a critic or a discriminator. Uh, the generator um, uh, know nothing, just to generate random images. And the, gener the critic is the one who have access to the data, whether the data is the cats, or, or, the, or the artworks, or whatever uh, images you give it. So the generator will just start with a random image and give it to a critic. A critic will say that's a random image. It's not uh, uh, one of these uh, images in my data. Uh, so it will say that it's not art in that case. And then uh, this signal go back to the generator. I'll try to enhance and make another random image, try to improve and improve and improve. And at the same time, the critic try to uh, improve his ability also in, in telling what, what's uh, real and what's not real until they reach, uh, hopefully, an equilibrium and uh, the generator can generate something sensible. That's basically what GAN is. And it has been uh, really the, 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 the machine behind the new wave of using art uh, and making uh, art using AI. But what kind of aesthetics uh, you get in, in GAN images? So um, these are images we generated using GANs uh, it, when we feed it with uh, portraits, uh, uh, classical portraits. Uh, lots and lots of classical portraits um, from Renaissance and Baroque all the way to, uh, to uh, pre-impressionism. And this is what you get. Uh, so what you notice here, basically what you get is uh, what I call um, the aesthetics of machine failure. The machine actually failed to make an, a, a correct portrait and in its, in, in its failure to do, to do so, give us something might be interesting. A little bit something that's weird uh, and, and might be uh, surprising to us. And for our cognitive system, that's really the source of why you might like it or why you might hate it. Uh, that's exactly what, the, 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 what happened when you see an artwork. You, you might like it and you might hate it for the same reason. Uh, and that's exactly uh, what happened, for example, when you see Francis Bacon uh, portrait. So all AI art uh, uh, nowadays mostly is basically um, uh, digging into this weirdness and surprise that comes of manipulating form and making something uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, to some people and might be uh, not interesting to others. So um, uh, who is the artist in this process, which is a fundamental question. Uh, so the process usually is like that. You um, have an AI generator model, some, some algorithm in the middle. Uh, you input a data set to that algorithm, um, your cats, your dogs, your, your whatever uh, uh, images. Uh, so you actually, as an artist, uh, you actually pre-curate uh, this process by giving it some data. And uh, you choose your parameters of the algorithm, you tweak the algorithm, and at the end, the algorithm generates thousand, thousand images. You go through them um, and post-curate the, the images that you're gonna show to the world. So um, as an artist, your role is pre-curation, choosing or tweaking the algorithm, and post-curation. So it's clear here that uh, this kind of art making is a process. It's more of a conceptual art to me, where you as an artist build the process. You might use other 
Bibel codes or even other Bibel trained models already. So you might not have um, much control of the input data if you are just using somebody else's code. Uh, but you're still tweaking the parameters and, and searching for something or, or, or training your own model. At the end, it's a process. Right, so you have to think of it as um, the art is not the outcome. The art is the whole process, or the whole uh, uh, process of making that art. And that's very important when uh, it comes to issues of uh, copyright and, and who owns the art and things like that. But it's clear that actually the artists here are in charge of making the art. Art is in the pre-curation, in the tweaking, in the post-curation. Uh, and the AI is just a tool. Uh, it's a tool at becoming creative to some degree. Uh, is GAN creative? Um, I totally believe that GAN by design is, is not creative because by design is designed to emulate uh, the input. Uh, so if you give it artworks like that, it will give you, uh, try to emulate uh, the artworks. Uh, it might be interesting to you, but uh, it didn't intend to make anything new. It just failed to make uh, imitation. As GANs become uh, more and more good in emulating, uh, this element of surprise will go away. So I, feel, uh, I felt from the first day that GAN is a dead end in making art. You have to change it. And that's why, actually, uh, we created uh, um, what, uh, our version of GAN that we're going to talk about. But here is the idea behind it, how to move from being emulative to being innovative, um, uh, or from being generative to being creative. Uh, uh, that's why we created our variant of GAN, which we called Creative Adversarial Network. I'll explain in a second how this works. Basically, it's... Uh, Using um, uh, theories from uh, psychology and uh, um, psychology of, of perception and um, uh, art history to, to uh, modify GANs to, to make it more creative. Let's think about that. S suppose you are an artist living at the late uh, um, uh, 19th century. So impressionist was a, at its, its peak, and, and uh, there were a lot of uh, impressionist artists trying with impressionism. And um, as, as a, after, after a little bit, you kind of bored of, of that kind of art as a new artist uh, uh, emerging at the time. So you're trying to innovate. So that's exactly what uh, uh, artists do all the time. So the theory behind that is that uh, because of habituation to art, we always have to, artists have to always innovate, have to come, find something interesting. And that's where uh, um, uh, Cezanne came and Picasso came and, and, and tried to innovate after Impressionism. However, artist has to innovate with a constrained way because if they innovate too much, like what Picasso did here, uh, this would be too sh too shocking to, to the public, and people, even artists, would not accept that. So uh, these two forces between habituation and innovation is really what uh, uh, pushed the art uh, uh, forward. Um, at least the, the, the theory that I believe in. Uh, so uh, that's exactly what we did here. Uh, so we designed the GAN such that it's. Um, it will follow the aesthetics, um, but at the same time try to break out of style. And these two, source, two, two, two opposing forces is what make it creative. So it tried to break out of style. We gave it artwork from, from Renaissance till now. It learned about Renaissance, Baroque, Impressionism, Cubism, uh, Realism. And so it know all these styles and try to generate something. Uh, but if it start to generate another Impressionist art or another Cubism art, it get banalized. So that's uh, the force that will push it to innovate. However, in the same time, it has to follow the aesthetics. If, if it give me a random image, which uh, obviously will not follow any, any art movement, that's not acceptable. So between these opposing forces come creativity. And uh, for that reason, uh, these are some of the images that, images that the, the algorithm start to generate, which are, as you see here, by construction, it doesn't just give you a weird image. It uh, had good choice of colors, good choice of aesthetics, but at the same time, it's also still surprising and still uh, innovative and still have uh, 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 some uh, um, um, artistic sense, and, and, uh, but still uh, uh, move away from uh, existing styles. So um, we um, have been exhibiting this in the last two years uh, in different venues. Uh, this is uh, from our first uh, um, uh, exhibition in Los Angeles uh, two years ago, uh, and this from our latest exhibition uh, two months ago. Um, and uh, the, the, the interesting thing was to me was that the reaction of artists to, to seeing these artworks on, 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 on canvas and, and on, on, on uh, physical form. Basically, the question I always receive from artists is how can I do that? How can I make my own uh, version of AI art? And I realized that uh, very few artists are, are privileged to, to, to know how uh, to do that. 
most artists are not technology savvy and, and cannot really do that. It's very hard to them. And that actually make me really think about how can make that available to artists. How to uh, basically uh, enable artists to make their own uh, AI uh, uh, art. So basically, I'm introducing here uh, something we built called uh, Blayform. You can go to blayform.io. Uh, so basically, that allow you as an artist or as a creative user in general to create your own uh, uh, artwork using AI by training your own model without any coding or any uh, experience at all. All you need to do is uh, just um, basically um, uh, plug in uh, some images, upload some images, uh, which we, we call inspiration. What's your inspiration? In this project, I, I just put uh, Renaissance uh, portraits, for example. And then what aesthetics you want. So I want uh, flowers as my aesthetics. And uh, just submit that, and after an hour, you get the results. The result, basically, uh, you have a slider here where you actually can go uh, see all the models, that, all the evolution of that model from the beginning uh, till the end. And you can go through many, many uh, images that the, the, the model has generated from your own data um, or from the data that you choose. And uh, here it's very uh, interesting to me to see flowery Renaissance uh, portrait. Anyway, so you can do, the, 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 the sky is the limit of what you can do with these kind of things if you just uh, play around with it. No, no coding required, no experience required. This is an artwork that uh, uh, was done by this tool in, in progress by an artist named is Devine Garakhanian when he combined, again, uh, classical portraits with Charlie Chaplin uh, photos to create uh, this, which was shown in some exhibitions before. And um, you can sign up here for, uh, to get in our waiting list and, and start using this. So that ends my talk. Thank you very much.